I mean, he can he can play. It's not something where he's just kind of hitting a hot streak here and there or something like that. Who's today is John Stockton. Mm. I think as long as he's playing, Steve Nash is Nash, as close as you're going to get to what John Stockton was about. I mean, the consistency in terms of shooting the basketball. Steve is one of the game's greatest shooters of all time. John Stockton, consistently a 50% shooter, a playmaker, an assist maker. But Isaiah Thomas, as Floyd Mayweather told us on this show a couple weeks ago, is a legitimate MVP candidate. I came from the trenches, so I could have lost it all. All I ever wanted was to get all the Mars. No, they wonder how I'm winning. I didn't do too many losses. We all know about the great players that have come across the NBA. The LeBrons, Jordans, Kobe's, those type of guys who are expected to be one of the greats. But what we tend to forget about are the players that are not supposed to be great, but have had exceptional seasons at one point. Here in this video, I'll talk about 5 NBA players that had the most unexpected great seasons we've ever seen. Starting this video off, let's talk about a player with arguably the greatest one season prime in NBA history. Jeremy Lin came out of Harvard and went undrafted in the 2010 NBA draft. He was picked up by the Dallas Mavericks at the time to play with their summer league team and played well enough to be offered a spot on the Golden State Warriors, where he'd eventually sign. He didn't get a lot of playing time due to the Warriors both having Steph Curry and Monte Ellis at the time, so he'd end up being waived by the Warriors the year after in 2011. Lin then got picked up from waivers by the Houston Rockets, but because they already had three point guards in Kyle Lowry, Goran Dragic, and Johnny Flynn all on guaranteed contracts, they cut Lin right before the season. Now here's where Lin's story really starts. The New York Knicks in 2011-2012 had lots of point guard issues at the start, waving Chauncey Billups, Iman Shumper being hurt, and Baron Davis being hurt as well. The Knicks picked Lin up from waivers on December 27th and plan on him being the backup to Tony Douglas and Mike Bibby. Fast forward to February 3rd, and coach Mike D'Antoni is frustrated with his point guards not being able to run his offense correctly. Lynn plays garbage minutes in that February 3rd game against the Boston Celtics, but played a certain way that D'Antoni liked. The next day, the Knicks have a game against the New Jersey Nets, led by all-star Darren Williams. Jeremy Lynn comes off the bench and completely outplays everybody that was on the court. Lynn finished with 25 points, 5 rebounds, and 7 assists to come out with the win. This game is what started the great era called Lynn Sanden. D'Antoni moved Jeremy Lynn to the starting lineup, and the Knicks won 7 straight right after, dominating the top guards in the league. Lynn went up against John Wall and gave him 23 and 10. He went up against Kobe and the Lakers right after, and gave them a career high 38 and 7 in a win, completely outplaying Kobe in that game. Lynn became a worldwide superstar during this stretch averaging 22-8 in the first 12 games, leading them to a 9-3 record. All-Star Weekend comes around, and we start to see the fall of Lin Sanity. The Knicks replace D'Antoni with Mike Woodson, who runs less pick and rolls, which Lin excelled at. Lin suffered a torn meniscus in his left knee on March 24th, and would miss the rest of the season for the surgery. Lin was a free agent after this season, but because his great run was only for 26 games, most teams only thought of him as a bench player. He signed with the Rockets after that season, and that was to come to the end of Linsanity. But what a story to have a young player like that. Get waived multiple times, sign with one of the biggest teams in the league, and dominate every team you play against. Witnessing this was one of the great times in NBA history. The next guy on this list had a very surprising year, but not in the way you'd expect it to be. Paul George had been a star since he was drafted to the Indiana Pacers in 2010. Perennial all-star, one of the best small forwards in the league, and a great two-way player, George was having a great career in the NBA. After seven years in Indiana, however, he gets traded to the OKC Thunder for Victor Oladipo and DeMontis Sabonis, which seems like a good deal for both sides. Paul George continues to do what he normally does, averaging 22-5-3 in 2017-18 season. It's what he does in the 2018-2019 season that is remarkable. George elevates his game tenfold setting career highs in points, rebounds, and steals per game, with 28, 8.2, and 2.2. He led the Thunder to a 6th seed and finished the season with a lot of recognition. He was 3rd in MVP voting, 3rd in Defensive Player of the Year voting, All-NBA First Team, All-Defensive First Team, and an All-Star this year. From looking like a secondary star at best, Paul George was looking like he could lead a team to a championship with the right pieces. That's why when the Thunder traded him to the Clippers, 
They got MVP candidate Shea Gilgis Alexander and a crazy five first round picks in return for George. After this MVP caliber season, George went right back to how he was performing before, a casual 21, five and four. But it was weird to see such an amazing season out of a star, then he goes right back to how he was before. Another guy that we have on this list is a two-time MVP. I know you might be thinking, how can a two-time MVP have an unexpected great season? Let me break it down for you guys real quick. Steve Nash was drafted 15th to the Phoenix Suns in the legendary 1996 NBA Draft. He did barely anything in his first four seasons, averaging less than 10 points and 5 assists across those four seasons combined. It wouldn't be until his sixth season where he would make an all-star team, doing it alongside Dirk Nowitzki. Nash would spend his first two years in Phoenix, the next six in Dallas, then would sign back with Phoenix as a free agent. At this point, Steve Nash is only a two-time All-Star in eight seasons. That's what makes these next two seasons absolutely unexpected. He goes back to Phoenix and spends the next two seasons as the MVP of the league, winning the award over the likes of Shaquille O'Neal, Kobe Bryant, and Tim Duncan. Although many people don't agree he should have those MVPs, it was a great couple of seasons. He finished off his career with four more All-Star appearances in eight years, but man, it was fun to watch Steve Nash run that famous seven seconds or less offense. The next guy on this list was the very first draft pick of the Toronto Raptors. The Raptors were an expansion team when the NBA wanted to move into Canada. They had the seventh pick in the 1995 NBA draft and were expected to take UCLA star Ed O'Bannon with their first ever pick. However, they took 5'10 Arizona point guard Damon Stoudemire instead sparking boos from Raptors fans all over the world. It's safe to say Stoudemire wasn't expected to do anything coming into the NBA. But with those boos fueling Stoudemire, Damon went on to average 19 points and 9 assists, taking home Rookie of the Year honors as well. He's the smallest player to ever take home those honors, but Stoudemire's rookie season looked to be a one-hit wonder. He would have a similar season the next year, but would get traded the season after and be disappointing compared to his rookie year. Damon Stoudemire went from not expected to do anything out of the draft, then supposing to be one of the best guards in the league at some point, to proving those people right and not being worth the 7th pick. It was a roller coaster of a career for Stoudemire, making him one of the players with the most unexpected prime. The last guy we'll talk about is another guy under 6 feet tall. Isaiah Thomas was selected with the 60th pick from the Sacramento Kings in the stacked 2011 NBA draft, being the last person picked. Named after the Pistons' Isaiah Thomas, the 5'9 guard did pretty good in his rookie season, winning Rookie of the Month twice and finishing 7th in Rookie of the Year vote. Fast forward a couple years after jumping team to team, Thomas ends up on the Boston Celtics. He's never been anything special due to his small size and his bad defense, but his 2017 season with the Celtics is a different story. Thomas averaged almost 29 points and 6 assists in an MVP caliber season that saw Boston finish first in the Eastern Conference. Thomas led that team to the Conference Finals where they lose to LeBron and the Cavs, but he was on a different level this season. His scoring ability was one of the best in the league even at 5'9", being almost unstoppable on the offensive end. Unfortunately, Thomas was traded in the offseason to the Cavs for Kyrie Irving and could never get back to that MVP level player he was due to injuries. But for Thomas to lead the legendary Boston Celtics to the one seed at 5'9", there's something ridiculous and unexpected about that. Let me know if I missed anybody in the comments. All that being said, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Please like and subscribe and I'll talk to you guys later.